I want to ask a simple question. Was Jesus a prophet sent by God according to the earliest Gospels that we have today? When I ask Christians this question, I tell them that your Bible says that Jesus was a prophet in the Gospels. They say, no, 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 no. Where does it say that? Jesus was God. Uh, and I'm of course saying that the Gospels show that Jesus was sent by God. So to help me answer this question, I thought I'd turn to a leading expert, um, the author of this wonderful book called The Changing Faces of Jesus by Giza Vermesh, who I've uh, mentioned before in a previous video. Um, he is a professor of Jewish studies at Oxford, but he's an historian and his speciality is in the Jewish world and the Jewish context of the first century and the life of Jesus. In other words, he's one of the world's leading Jewish scholars. Uh, he's written many books and I recommend all of them. Um, and in this book, he actually addresses this very question. There's a chapter uh, called Jesus as Prophet in the Synoptic Gospels. That's in Matthew, Mark and Luke. And I just want to share with you what he says, um, which is quite interesting. Yisav Amish writes, Indeed, the unanimous testimony of the evangelists, that's Matthew, Mark and Luke, leaves one in no doubt that sympathetic Galilean folk regarded Jesus as a prophet. This was not on account of his ability to teach or foretell the future. The popular definition, the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee, Matthew 21, 11, was based on the miracles and, miracles and wonders ascribed to him. Witnessing the reawakening of the young man in Nain, the crowd exclaimed, A great prophet has risen among us. Luke 7, 16. The same observation is expressed in the closer circle of the followers of Jesus. The two disciples on the way to Emmaus describe the dead Jesus to the unrecognised risen Christ as, quote, a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and before his people. Luke 24, 19. Even Simon the Pharisee, though personally unconvinced, knew that Jesus had a reputation as a prophet. Luke 7, 39. Furthermore, we are told that the deeply hostile chief priests hesitated to arrest Jesus because they feared the reaction of ordinary people for whom the charismatic Jesus was a messenger of God. Matthew 21, 46. At this point, we may venture one step further and note that according to the evangelist, Jesus perceived himself explicitly as a miracle-working prophet. The famous Nazareth episode is profoundly revealing. Quote, a prophet is not without honour except in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. Mark 6, 4, Matthew 13, 57, Luke 4, 24. The context of the story makes it plain that Jesus' disillusioned declaration was sparked off by the dislike of the locals for his charismatic teaching and mighty works. Mark 6, 2, Matthew 13, 54. Conversely, since people of his hometown had no faith in him, the spiritually paralysed Jesus was incapable of curing and exorcising among them. He could do no miracles. He was powerless. According to Luke's version, the Galilean Jesus saw a link between his charismatic deeds and those of Elijah and Elisha, the two foremost wonder workers active in the northern kingdom of Israel, which of course they were prophets, when he remarked, No prophet is acceptable in his own country. But in truth I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, and Elijah was sent to none of them but only to Zephathah in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed but only Naaman the Syrian. Luke 4, 24-7 It is impossible to prove the verbal authenticity of these sayings, but as far as their substance is concerned, I have no doubt that it was not in the interests of the evangelists or the primitive church to invent them. They definitely went against the grain, 
Indeed, the tendency revealed in both Acts of the Apostles and John, the Gospel of John, was to enhance the statue of Jesus from miracle working prophet to ultimate mouthpiece of God through the correcting prism of the church's faith. Unsurprisingly, Paul preferred to disregard the issue, and one observes throughout the centuries a definite coolness on the part of New Testament exegetes towards the very Jewish concept of the prophet Jesus, perfectly at home in the world of unsophisticated Galilean Jews of his age. Consequently, the vignette of Jesus, the Elijah-like charismatic prophet, enjoys all the credentials of truth. End quote. So there's an abundance of references in the Synoptic Gospel to Jesus either being called a prophet, being described as a prophet, or calling himself a prophet. And because this, this idea, this belief, goes against uh, the later church faith towards the end of the first century when the Gospels are written, Giza Vermish believes uh, that these uh, have a ring of truth and it's not likely to be invented by the, the church as it went against the grain of their ever-increasing exaltation and deification of Jesus. So um, I quoted the references, the particular uh, gospel references. If you want to stop the video and make a note, the next time a Christian asks you, where does it say Jesus was a prophet? Where does he say he's a prophet? There are abundance of references uh, for you. Now, of course, later on uh, in the creeds and councils of the church, any idea of Jesus as a prophet is completely lost and no one calls him that anymore. Now he's the divine son of God, of one being with the Father, and he has worshipped alongside God the Father. Um, I mean, you can see there's a huge, massive trajectory from prophet of God to being the creator of the universe. Um, and uh, Jews and Muslims, of course, find that uh, transformation completely unacceptable and I think Giza Vermish would have agreed with them uh, but on historical grounds that such uh, exalted, exalted beliefs about Jesus uh, are not found uh, in the earliest tradition that we have in our records. I hope that was of interest. Till next time.